After years upon years of swelling revenues followed by a crash we're not allowed to refer to as a crash from the year 2008 to 2013, fuck you, I called it, deal with it, the modern gaming industry's recovery has still had more complications than a Tijuana tit job. Namely, the slow withering death of fucking variety. Sure, we had some variant of this phenomenon in previous gaming generations. We're all still scarred from the ceaseless procession of modern military shooters of the late aughts, but who knew a decade on the strong, independent, sapphic slag rocking a one-strap backpack and a ponytail, pounding pubes with some skank who has two scenes to live, would officially be the bald space marine of 2021. For the lady golfer excursions of the Gashed of Us 2, to Assassin's Creed Valhalla's female variant of player character I or munching muff and walking like Lawrence Taylor, it's not so much that we've dismantled cliché as we've replaced it with a set of all new ones. Doubly so for the dated ass gameplay. Wanted a stealth game? Have a stealth mode. Enjoy open world exploration? Hope you don't mind it being emptier than a CNN anchor's skull. Role play? Hope you like perks and fucking skill trees. It's like the only thing developers learn from the success of System Shock 2 and Deus Ex is combining genres is good, and so they decided to combine them fucking all. Consequently, the modern gaming experience is like stopping at the grocery store for some food, but instead of grabbing a dozen eggs, you grab one egg. Instead of a box of Pop-Tarts, you nab half a fucking packet. Instead of a gallon of milk, you pour yourself a glass. And on and on, you amble down every aisle in the store, grabbing one of every fucking food, and decide, that's your din-din. Sure, you might be able to transmogrify the fucking monstrosity into one hideous leaning tower of Pop-Tarts, meatballs, and bacon casserole, but you better soundproof the bathroom for the fucking aftermath. And it's all down to the death of the genre. You can say what you want about the limitations presented by setting out to make only a music game, only a shooter, or only an RTS from right from the outset, but the truth is the parameters of gaming genre are as much there for the developers as they are for the players. Sadly, the players in part are to blame for this phenomenon. It's not as if publishers don't attempt to address the public, perhaps best personified by the dreaded Ugh. Focus Group, where upon a bunch of titwanks from a Target demo sit Indian style in some Montreal office, looking at concept art, playing pre-alpha builds, and weighing in on what works and what doesn't, even if it's a half-formed fucking product. The problem with this approach? Focus groups are, without exception, goddamn dipshits! Focus groups asked for a voiceover in fucking Blade Runner. Focus groups responded positively to New Coke, MySpace 2.0, and Jar Jar fucking Binks! Leaving a fucking focus group alone with a room full of contradictory-ass gameplay features and telling them to exercise moderation is like setting Hannibal Lecter loose on a princess cruise and telling him to watch his weight. Why do you think Wendy's got rid of the fucking salad bar, folks? You ever watch one of those silly straw chromosome douche weasels sidle on up to the trough, take 20 of everything and wind up with a plate that looks like a goddamn GAC commercial? I bet you'll leave the grab bag approach for the Biden birthday sack race and confer your games with some actual fucking vision. How ironic is it that the most muddled ass, meandering, catch-all cock shit in modern gaming comes from the group with the word FOCUS in the fucking title? Granted, some of this is due to the plummeting volume of game releases in general. I mean, this time in the year 2010, 25 titloads of new products spanning all strata from single-A to triple-A were pinched out by industry asshats on a monthly motherfucking basis. And here again, many developers argue that is a net positive. I try not to dry heave at the irony of the same knuckle-dragon dong holsters behind some strumpet slinging a butt-fucking bow open world womb sim number 9,877, proffering the cyclonic industry spin at GDC every year that genres are dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you think so, you fucking prince? What do you call samey-ass Horizon of Arkham's Mordor Creed exactly? Sweepingly fucking original? Sandbox slag simulators are still a genre genre, jackass. They're just a profoundly fucking shitty one. And the ironic response proffered from piss ants all over the interwebs whenever you say, suggest Assassin's Creed may have been better served honing in on the atmosphere and fucking sneakifying that drew people to the first game in the first place, replying with a hearty herder and you just wish the game stopped being fucking popular. This despite the fact that the first Assassin's Creed remains among the best selling in the series, outselling the first four fucking sequels is a kind of stupid that physically 
fucking hurts. Particularly as you've just effectively argued that a game should do 11 things motherfucking miserably, as opposed to two or three things profoundly fucking well. Put it this way, Pitstain. I doubt Super Mario would have made the show if after bashing each block with a greasy wop skull, he paused for a Viking fucking poetry slam. Actual feature in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, by the way. Flee for your fucking lives! I'm not arguing for limitation here. I'm arguing for focus. You can crow about artificial strictures and self-limitation all you goddamn like. Five unctuous, uncharted sequels deep, it is clear as crystal. Genre distinctions were there for a fucking reason. Genre is the jaded doorman who stops every aberrant gameplay feature from the flavor of the nanosecond from cramming its crappy ass through the doorframe of your favorite franchises and fucking up the champagne room in the process. And like most people post-lockdown, that doorman, sadly, has long since been laid the fuck off. Sure, you can still see some genre games, on Steam sale for $7.95. I'll give you three guesses whether it's from an isometric perspective, but trust me, you'll only need fucking one. And sadly, the money marks in the AAA gaming sphere are all aboard the mixed genre circle jerk. Who wants to play an annual Assassin's Creed cringe fest that functions as a glorified bag of holding for half-assed features from a dozen or so superior titles when you could just... Play those superior titles! This is why Thief the Dark Project, despite a graphics engine with a poly count of a fucking triangle, 20 years on, still has stealth gameplay tighter than Joan Jett's face. And hey, thanks, Witcher and its inbred sci-fi offspring Cyberpunk for persuading an entire generation of Jagoff developers that sex scenes are a substitute for substance. Sure, the shooting doesn't work, the RPG elements are a mirage, and you'll be lucky not to load inside an air conditioning unit every time you boot up this bullshit, but hey! The main character I haven't connected with is getting some cooch. Between trainee hookers, braindance BJs, and being handed a character who's prefabbed in every fucking respect by the precise shape and curvature of his fucking foreskin, the player's mind is about the only thing that's not being blown. I'm Razor Fist. God fucking speed.